hello, I'm doing a review for this book. It's Wasted by Maria Hornbacker, and I hope that's pronounced okay. I know that she doesn't like her name said incorrectly. Um, in this powerful and emotive memoir, Hornbacker traces her journey through eating disorders, beginning with bulimia and progressing on to anorexia. Beautifully written, with a wonderful, dry humour, the sort of humour that was lost by most people circa 2015. Wasted is brilliantly written. Hornbacker writes in a very personal style as she shares her story. At times she is poetic and ambling, at other times she cuts to the quick. Always with carefully selected words which show the breadth of emotions circulating in a young woman. Hornbacker describes how she began making herself sick fairly casually at a young age. Later, her bulimia worsened as she binged and purged in an addictive manner. Hornbacker explains the emotions behind this cycle of behaviour very well. Hornbacker became an impressive expert in the art of bulimia, being able to vomit on command and silently. Unfortunately, she couldn't control the pipes bursting and spilling her waste out for people to find. It's growth. Eating disorders are growth, and Hornbacker shows that explicitly. But she also shows the enviable nature of them. Bulimia allows a person to gorge on food, which many of us jealously work hard to resist doing. And then there's anorexia, the cold sister to bulimia. Whereas bulimia indicates a lack of control, anorexia is the epitome of control. And the ugly truth is that that level of control is also on some level enviable. Throughout this book, Hornbacker discusses the pressures on women to control their appetites, as well as their other desires. And although she is an extreme example, Hornbacker is at the end of a spectrum, spectrum that almost all women are on. In our culture, thinness is associated with wealth, upward mobility, success. I may not even need to point out that these things are associated with self-control and discipline. Conversely, fat is associated with weakness, laziness and poverty. This is one of the terrible banal truths of eating disorders. When a woman is thin in this culture, she proves her worth in a way that no great accomplishment no stellar career, nothing at all can match. We believe she has done what centuries of a collective unconscious insist that no woman can do, control herself. <coughs> I'm not sure that eating disorders are as prevalent today as they were in the 1980s and 90s when this memoir refers to. But certainly in the period referenced, it was not unusual for young girls and grown women and mothers to avoid eating when possible and to get into the habit of making themselves sick. Hornbacker is quick to point out the role of society in encouraging women to eat in a disordered way, to obsess about their weight and to place a great deal of their self-worth on how well they can keep off fat. A strange equation and, altogether, and an altogether too common belief. One's worth is exponentially increased with one's incremental disappearance. Hornbacker's journey through eating disorders is highly personal and as she states herself will be different from other women's experiences. It comes through in Wasted that Hornbacker has numerous issues she is working through and that her eating disorders were in some ways an expression of her personality, although influenced by her environment. Hornbacker's character is both obsessive and extreme. She is also highly motivated and talented. These attributes coloured her experience with an eating disorder. Throughout her memoir, Hornbacker dismisses her casual sex and drug taking activities. I can only assume she will return to deal with these issues later in life. Hornbacker makes regular attempts to lay the blame for her eating disorders at the feet of her own character traits, and she actively steers blame away from her parents. 
However, it clearly comes across that she wished to emulate her mother, who suffered a milder eating disorder. I loved Hornbacher's honesty throughout the book, as in this example. I said defensively, I don't eat that much. The bragging was the worst, women yammering on about how little they eat. Oh, I'm starving. I haven't eaten all day. I think I'll have a great big piece of lettuce. I'm not hungry. I don't like to eat in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, on Tuesdays, when my nails aren't painted, when my shin hurts, when it's raining, when it's sunny, on national holidays, after or before 2am. I heard it in the hospital, These te that terrible ironic whine from the chapped lips of women starving to death. But I'm not hungry. To hear women tell it, we're never hungry. Food makes us queasy. Food makes us itchy. Food is too messy. All I really like to eat is celery. To hear women tell it, we're ethereal beings who eat with the greatest distaste, scraping scraps of food between our teeth with our upper lip curled. Theoretification is bullshit. As Hornbacker's journey into eating disorders continues, it becomes harrowing and difficult to read. I found her retelling of eating frozen yoghurt in the corner of a cafe particularly upsetting. By this stage, she is a successful young woman, clearly very intelligent, yet tied in knots by the hoops held out for women in our society. At times, it was very dark. The pain is necessary, especially the pain of hunger. It reassures you that you are strong, can withstand anything, that you are not a slave to your body. You don't have to give in to its whinings. It's hard to describe how these two things can take place in the same mind. The arrogant, self-absorbed pride in yourself for your incredible feat, and the belief that you are so evil as to deserve starvation and any other form of self-mutilation. Hornbacker confirms my fears. Eating disorders are overarchingly about being thin. And it should go without saying that however thin is not thin enough. A bit less is always better. Never believe an eating disordered person who says she hates food. It's a lie. Denied food, your body and brain will begin to obsess about it. Instead of eating, you simply think about food all the time. You dream about it. You stare at it. But you do not eat it. I was shocked when Hornbacker said she got down to 80 pounds. That's five stone 10 or 36 kilos. My jaw dropped to the floor when she got down to 67 pounds. That's four stone 11 <clears throat> or just over 30 kilos. Hornbacker's lowest weight was 52 pounds. That's three stone 10 or just under 24 kilos. I cried. I'm only human and thinking of a young woman in that state of starvation was devastating. Talking about her bones sticking out, the space between her bones and her thighs, that was totally gross. It made me feel sick. It brought tears to my eyes. The only time I've read about bodies like this is when I've read accounts of Auschwitz. How could a young woman surrounded by food do this to herself? I was filled with a bizarre combination of sympathy and awe. Whilst Hornbacker gave a detailed account of her eating disorder experiences, there was a lot there was also a lot that she left out about her final time in hospital. Hornbacker is in recovery at the end of her memoir, and she explains some of the difficulties of adjusting to life when you try to eat healthily. And when you decide you are tired of being alone with your sickness, <clears throat> you go out seeking women friends, people who you believe can show you by example how to eat. How to live and you find that by and large most women are obsessed with their weight. It's a little discouraging. I felt really close to Hornbacker as I read her memoir. She was very honest and with her honesty came a damning and correct review of Western society's views and expectations of women. With her honesty also came a petulant shallow teenager who I wanted to slap some sense into. Also, what came through was someone who is still very much a child, someone who has only scratched the surface of some of her biggest issues. 
and I felt a maternal sympathy for her. Hornbacker didn't try to come across as likeable and at times she was completely awful. I also felt huge affection for her. She came across as complex, cocky, incredibly intelligent, funny and fucked up. She came across as human and I think that's why I couldn't get enough of this book because she showed something that's in all of us to some extent. In conclusion, this book was excellent. However, anyone wishing to read it should be aware of their own background, as this book could be an unsuitable read for someone who has an eating disorder. I found this book incredibly readable. I could hardly put it down. Even though the subject matter was a tough one, and as the book went on, I was torn between reading ardently and covering my eyes and reading between my fingers. The physical abuse that Hornbacker put her poor body through was horrifying. I was moved by this book and it scratched at some of my deeper emotions. This book was harrowing. Brilliant, but harrowing. I need some fiction after reading this book. And the next book I'm going to be reading is Of Human Bondage by W. Somerset. Mom, mom, mom. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening.